There are wrestling tropes Triple H must retire if he wants to regain the WWE face goodwill. Although fans and wrestlers seem to treat of the Seruba assassin running the show in creative, the novel will quickly wear off if fans see the resumption of these bad tropes. Join us as look at wrestling tropes Triple H must retire now that he is in power. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more videos. And also follow me on Twitter. Number 2. Restarting a singles match and making it a tag team match. This was a Vince McMahon for a very few years. One alternative is to book a tag team match but to set it up for the next week or at a premium event. This could help build interest for future shows. Rory used this trope on the 1st August 2022 edition, which is a good sign for Triple H's use of tropes. Number 3. Contract signing. Contract signings are overused and predictable. Two signs is time to retire Raw. WWG can remember the WWE watching contract signing on both Raw and SmackDown the same week, a clear sign of bad booking. Number 4. Breaking up tag teams with no endgame. Break up of the Rockers, namely Shawn Michaels and Matt Janet, remains one of the greatest storylines, such as the Mega Powers Explode. There have been dozens of pointless breakups with no endgame. Rumor is that Vince McMahon wasn't a fan of tag team wrestling which could explain why I felt their main use was to feather the singles program and create new feeds. Fans saw this with factions as well. Promising faction led to a split up all that business which was undeniably over with the fans broke up before it even reached its peak. The reason this breakup failed was because the WWE had no follow-up. Mustafa Ali disappeared from WWE TV after Red Vision imploded, while that business Sheldon Benjamin and Cedric Alexander faded back into the mid card. Number 5 endless rematches. This drop dates back to the Attitude Era when the WWE had the same match that occurred on Pepe V the Raw after a show. Rematches are important in wrestling, and if a match is good enough, fans will want to see it take place more than once. The secret is to build the stakes with each match so that fans feel invested in seeing it happen again. For example, a U can cheat their way to victory in the first match, leading to a special referee second match. A who could have outside interference leading to a cage match. The possibility are many about the WWE often runs the same type of match for its rematches and doesn't give the fans a better breather. The Cordillos vs Seth Rollins feud was handled well in that the WWE received their matches for premium events and spread them out over roughly a month each. Compare this with any other program in the WWE. The WWE rarely changes its rematches by booking them in exciting ways such as expanding a singles feud into a tag team match or booking a stipulation for the follow-up match. Number 6. Evil Authority Figure Eric Bischoff and Vince McMahon set the standard when it comes to authority figures who abuse their power. Bischoff's work in WCW as the NWO member was excellent, while Vince McMahon took his feather as Mr. McMahon. Unfortunately, the evil authority figure has been done to death, and Vince McMahon said the boss why that it's undoubtedly anyone can do as a job or handle the trap in a novel way that fraction up things or in the chains. Number 7. Finishers that don't finish. WWG knows that this trophy is unlikely to end, but what is more entertaining, the question whether a wrestler can lend their finisher and is close to a rope and gets their foot on the rope or outside interference etc, but they should be used sparingly. In the latter case, wrestlers reportedly hit their finishers without any image, begging the question why are they called finishers. Not every wrestler needs a finisher. Mid card wrestlers may have a signature move, but it should be established that they are still working on it, perfecting it to the level where it will eventually become a finisher. Number 8. Throw up finish. A wrestler can work on a 20 minute match, get hit with a rookie ball, and still kick out. So, what wrestlers routinely fail to escape a roll out after a distraction? Often, someone playing a Ravos entrance music. Number 9. Using cruiserweights as an instrument talent. Cruiserweights may or may not have a place in wrestling. For some fans, they are fantastic attraction, while for others, they are not. 
However, a few about them, cruiserweight should not be used as cream fodder for larger wrestlers. The WWE should have local talent or curtain checkers ready to save that purpose. Every rule has an exception. The classic is Rey Mysterio, who has successfully played David against many of WWE's goliaths. These matches have rarely been squashes, a reminder that cruiserweights normally belong in their own weight division. Number 10 20 Minute Promos The last time WWE had an entertaining 20 minute promo was The Rock and McFoley's Rocky This Is Your Life segment. While well, the 40 minute segment did its own movement and put in the ratings, it went way past its allocated time, creating problems for the rest of the show. Indeed, Bruce Pritchard once remarked on his podcast about why the segment was a mistake despite pulling in huge numbers. Here's the thing, okay? Great after the fact, it did a great rating, but the effect it had on the rest of the television show was horrendous. Because now we're having 2 and 3 minute segments and matches are getting cut, essentially they went 2 segments over. That is one of my pet peeves with writers. Russell didn't care, he didn't have to write it, and he didn't have to fix it. Whether Triple H retires these tropes will play a role in how successful he is in creating an entertaining program. Are there other wrestling tropes that Triple H must retire? Are there any other that we should add on our list? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Until then, see you next time.